let's now learn how to run the same trust analysis using APDL scripting. So on the left window on my desktop, I have a APDL script that runs the same analysis that we did for the trust that we just solved. And here I have the help documentation that I'm going to refer to as I explain the lines of my code. So the first line is actually saying that this is to be run in a batch mode. So um, I'm actually going to show you how to run a ANSYS simulation in the background. So run batch mode. And then I want to finish uh, or I want to finish everything that I have done if I'm in the middle of a simulation or something or at the end of it, finish the simulation stage and clear the background or the memory of ANSYS. Then I'm giving a file name. Basically, I'm defining the job name here. So if I go to annotate this, define job name, which here is trust. And out basically says output results. Output basically the progress information on or n scratch file basically and because I will be working in the background I will not be able to see anything going on on the screen but if I want to plot stuff I want to show them in a PNG file so I use that show PNG means output graphic uh, graphical information and PNG files. So let me take a look at these commands. If I come to commands, if I pick S and find show, and come down here, find PNG, basically says that it will show the plots in a PNG file. And there are multiple ways that you can show the results. You can also do JPEG or not show the results at all on the graphical user interface. The next step is to start the pre-processing. And the command for that from here, if I take a look at it again, is prep7. So click on that, enters the pre-processor. So I do prep7 here. And then I have to pick the element type. If you remember, we picked element type link 180. So ET is short for element type. I find it here. ET is short for element type. And then I give a reference number. And then I give the element type number. I could also write link 180 or just give the number there. And the real constant is not necessary for this simulation. MP is short for material properties, and the material properties I want to give are defined in here. Young's modulus and Poisson ratio of the values. Actually, this one was 211 for my analysis. So I'll give it that. So if I find MP here and the list. EX is the Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity and PRXY is the Poisson ratio that I want to give to my um, model. Section type is where we define the cross section of the link but we have to define what kind of section we want to um, give because there is beams and also shells you could apply for a, an analysis. So if I come to section type here we can see that first I have to give a reference number and then the type and one of the types is a link which is used for trusses so I have done section type comma one comma link to define a trust cross section and then section data is the information we want to provide for that section type so section data here and the value one if I find the link in this list here, the only thing I need is the cross-section area. So I give 0 0.01. Then I use the N command to create nodes. So N is short for nodes at those locations 
um, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0 for the four, uh, four nodes and then uh, five other nodes or three other nodes to create the all seven nodes and then I use E to create elements within the nodes again I can refer to my code here or model here so I created these nodes and I use E comma 1 comma 2 to create element 1 and so on and so forth so I've created 11 elements in here now this one was node 1 and this one was node 4 for node 1 all the degrees of freedom were 0 and for node 4 only uh, dx wasn't 0 or ux wasn't 0 so I apply all boundary conditions 0 to node 1 so if I go to D command I can say ux, uy, uz and if I say all here that means all degrees of freedom are equal to this value which is 0 and for that node so D is the degrees of freedom node is the node number that I want to uh, apply the boundary conditions to label is one of these stuff that are listed in here and then I have the value and then for node 4 I have given uh, displacement and y direction equal to 0 so again using the D command for node 4 displacement and y direction is equal to 0 and then I have the forces the F command is for forces similar to D I have to pick the node number and then the label so for node 5 which was here I apply a mi minus 100 FY and for node 7 which was here I apply a minus 200 Newton force in the X direction FX there so now I can come to solution uh, back slash solu starts a solution and solve basically solves the analysis and then I can finish it and here I come to post processing and what I'm doing here is saying output next information and a file called nodal underscore u dot txt so basically it outputs the results in a file called nodal underscore u and there I want to print the nodal solution so I have used pr nsol and I will show you what that does so basically it says print nodal displacements so pr nsol is a command here PR and so I'm looking for that here so PR is short for print and is for node and SOL is for solution print node all solution results and the item could be anything that is listed in a table below so I can say you and I can give the components or I can just leave it without the components to have all the components of displacement printed for me Similarly here, I'm outputting the results to a file called nodal underscore f or underscore r dot txt and here I want to print the reaction solution. So pr r sol, which should be close, prints the constraint nodal reaction solution. So pr is again short for print, r is for reaction and sol is for solution and I'm saying just print the forces. So print reaction forces then I'm outputting everything to output next results to a file called lm underscore s dot txt and here I'm printing stress solutions for the elements so pr eso print element solution PR ESO and I'm printing the stresses and then again I put I put everything into scratch and then I have PL ENSO which is plot 
nodal solution. Again, instead of PR, I have PL. If I find it, it says plot nodal solutions, plot nodal solution. And now I have U as a component for displacement or, or item for displacement and X as the component of displacement. And then I say print uh, or plot the nodal solutions and for the displacement of the nodes in Y direction. So this is it. Let me save this. Minimize this stuff. And uh, I have already picked this here. Let me browse it. This is um, the input file. If I can select and if I click edit, you can see that everything that I wrote there is showing here. And let me pick the working directory to be a folder called ANSYS. And I will look at that, what's happening there. It's basically empty right now. If I click OK, you will see that some stuff are going to happen in this window. Some files are created and I think it's done because it was a very quick simulation. So you can see that some files are created here. The first one is element solution, the one that we defined in our script. And these are the element stresses. Then I have the nodal reactions, just as I found before, and nodal displacements. And then the plots that I wanted, the nodal solutions, are shown in this window. The displacements of nodals uh, or nodes in the x direction and then in the y direction. So I ran a simulation without opening the window of ANSYS and I got everything that I wanted either in text format or uh, uh, images or files that are saved for me.